I want to start today's podcast with a plug, actually, because I don't think we've yeah. done this before. But I, I have, I'm doing my new hour of stuff, working, working that stuff out. I'm doing my first full length show at weirdly the Wynnum Fringe, which is something that's never happened before. The Wynnum Fringe, which is near Brisbane, about half an hour from Brisbane. And uh, yeah, that's on the 13th and 14th of November and there are tickets on sale on my website and so on. So if you want to come see a full show of my new stuff, that's happening. Is there anything you want to plug, Rathy? No, I don't have anything um, going on at the moment. Um, Well, we rarely use the podcast to plug anything, don't we? Yeah, I think it, yeah, I don't, I, I, yeah, there's nothing on the horizon or... I, like I wish I had something to look forward to. Well, the next time we plug something, it'll be me and you when you come up to Queensland and we do the podcast live, which will be yeah, I reckon. Yeah. I reckon will be soon. You know, like how like you just you you play everything through the TV, but it's like the internet and everything's connected and all that. Yeah. So like when you play like stuff on YouTube or whatever. But then you go and type, like you got friends over, but you type in the thing and it comes up with all the sh- last things you watched. Yeah. I always delete <laughs> those things before people come over if, if I remember to. You delete your YouTube history so people don't see what you've been searching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you, you, you know, you, you, you're just like, fuck, I don't want them to see, you know. Workshops video- on how to be confident. <laughs> yeah how to get a how much does a face transplant cost like <laughs> why would you search that in youtube it's so insane to search in youtube not google but youtube like just Sometimes- just like how lonely and just deranged you must be to search how much does a face plant <laughs> transplant cost into youtube like hoping that there'll be a video where a guy's like, you know what? There's different face transplants you can get. I'm going to go through the top 10 face transplants you can get. Okay. Number one, you know, those kind of. Took his face. We took his face off and put it on. And now things are better because people respect me because I have a good face. Yeah. Yeah. Those weird <laughs> self-help videos. Yeah. It's all that shit. Like, you know, like, yeah. Like how to, how to invest in an angel fund. Just shit you don't want people to say. <laughs> but yeah, then <laughs> why why do people disrespect me? Why do people disrespect me everywhere? And there's a guy going, I'll tell you why people disrespect you, because you're an asshole. Um, why Chris Change Hemsworth has how 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 why Chris Hemsworth's charismatic? I've looked up a few of them or whatever, just like you know, charismatic videos where they're like the key to charisma and they break it down and like you'll notice in the talk show, Chris lets him talk. Yeah, <laughs> and stuff like that, and then and then they pause the video, and they're like, "You'll notice he's listening now." Which ten makes reasons him... people respect Chris Hemsworth? One, he's got a six pack. You may think that's pack. trivial to have a six pack, but we find that if people are better looking, people respect them more. Ah, <laughs> fucking, fucking stupid shit. But you're looking at it like taking notes, going right, totally. I've looked yeah, up like um, how not to be socially like just so uncomfortable. People keep saying behind your back, you're autistic in group chats, which it says so much really, because it's like one, it says that I'm socially awkward, but two, it also says how paranoid I am. Yeah. That particular Social search. awkwardness and paranoia pair well together. I find. Oh, because of all the faux pas that you make. They because just act as like fertilizer self, for the paranoia. Yeah, because you're self-conscious and, and socially awkward, you're constantly making some faux pas and then you're analyzing the faux pas when you go home at night and you can't sleep. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Even though you just went on a hiking trip with four of your best friends and you're paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but so, yeah, you delete, um, so you delete your history delete of it. all the videos on how to get women to respect you. Yeah, you delete. <laughs> you delete like, um, yeah, all the stuff about melanomas. But yeah, then and then and then what happens is, is like 
melanomas. What, what what is a melanoma? <laughs> but yeah, uh, they always start broadly. What is a melanoma? You could be looking at one. But yeah, and so then you delete. But then what I found happened. What happens is uh, oh, something even more embarrassing is the default. It, what happens, you delete the search history. So what it goes to is like a default mm. list of things. It does, yeah. YouTube on the TV thing does. Yeah, so now it just thinks you're the most basic bitch ever. So it's like even more embarrassing. It's like the Pokemon Triwizard Tournament. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's the most generic, broad, mainstream search history that it's just default. So it's just like basically the most mainstream possible generic search. Yeah, it's like why Deadpool rocks was one it's of like, them. It's like Lady Gaga's new dress and shit like that. Yeah. It's like, it's like that, Ma- uh, Marvel Comics broken down. Yeah. Funniest cat top, videos. Top 10 Pokemon this season. And so now you look more like a psycho than before. I find because I think the default looks worse because it just makes you look like such a mainstream bitch that you might be a psychopath. (laughs) That your search history is just the single most popular things in the world at the moment. Yeah, it's categorically. It's like you're into, yeah, like Pokemon and anime and stuff, and like like Marvel movies. Paradoxically, makes you look more like a weirdo than if you've got weird searches. I, I see what you're saying. You're saying that your personalized search at least has some sense of character, character to put it nicely. And then the more generic default search history that Google generates is so generic and so mainstream and so devoid of any sort of human traits yeah. that it makes you look worse but i actually disagree with you i think your searches of why why does my posture repel women how to sit properly how 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 what what what, what how to make a woman laugh immediately like all those videos you search sjw actually. gets destroyed yeah why why jordan peterson rocks <laughs> jordan peterson destroys sjw so hard she faints Snowflake, <laughs> Snowflake gets flamethrowered. Snowflake like, melts in the hell of Ben Ben Shapiro's wisdom. Wisdom, <laughs> yeah, wisdom. That's great. Yeah, that I yeah. Now that you put it like that, I think probably best to go with the generic. Go with the generic, for God's sake. Go with the, yeah. So, I'm nearly forty now, and. I live alone and compared to a lot of my married friends, like I think it's just great. Like you recently moved in on your own and you love it, right? Yes. It's awesome. You do whatever you want and you have the whole house to yourself. So it's perfect, right? Except for that, just that moment when you go to bed alone and you just feel at the deepest sense of loneliness. It's like all your loneliness gets saved up and just put to that moment where you just, you just switch off all the lights and you're lying in bed and you're just alone. And you're like, if I died, how long would it take for them to find my body? That kind of loneliness. Yeah. The you answer, the have- answer is days. Day. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you get does that is that relatable just that that moment Did, am yeah. I articulating that I can't deal with that moment so I block it out like I'll listen to a podcast because then it feels like you know Tim Ferriss and another man are in the bed with me like talking to me like Mark Maron's in the bed with you having a conversation and this is not a homosexual fantasy no 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 yeah it, it's just well, you got very defensive I wanna, there. <laughs> I, I, no, 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 no. Well, it's just the example is triggering, but um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> but like no, yeah, it's more of an audio sensory embrace, right? Of the brain. Like it's like I've got company. 
you like the idea of someone lying next to you and just chatting. Yeah, just going. So what you've got to do is invest early and compound interest is the eighth miracle in the world as albert einstein once said like i almost want like a weird historical right kind, like like they're like quoting data and stuff at me like the aztecs were the first people to invest and the reason <laughs> it's all about investing it's always about investing isn't it it is at that time Something about the um, clinical nature of it, I find uplifting, if that makes so sense. So there is that. So I am kidding on a nerve there. It's the moment right when you're about to go to bed alone that I think yeah. you wish you had someone there and you substitute that with uh, just stock reports. Yeah, various um, fintech podcasts. What's fintech? Financial technology. Right. Cool. <laughs> so it'll be a guy talking about one of them I was listening to. The title of the podcast was Cryptocurrency and Reducing Your Anxiety. And uh, I was like, yeah, Sound like that's right up your alley. Yeah, I was like, that's two things I'm interested in that are seemingly yeah. separate. <laughs> Like they're unrelated. <laughs> like the podcast is like anyway in cryptocurrency. If you invest at this point, you should deem a redeem quite an interesting. Uh, you should be able to get quite a bit of money back from your cryptocurrency. Blockchain. Anyway, also find if you do some deep breathing exercises, that'll really help with your anxiety. Like they're totally separate. <laughs> but they're ticking off two things in your yeah, in your world. Of, Very list particular. Of small interests. Yeah, people who are interested in cryptocurrency actually, uh, often have harrowing mental illness issues. Absolutely, I've that's I only have three or four interests, and what, one of them is cryptocurrency, and another is reducing anxiety. So when a podcast manages to envelop both of those, you're like, yes, please, at two in the morning. Yes, yes, yes. They're they're the kind of things you want to hear about at that time. Um, something statistical and boring and then why you're not the only one suffering. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. That, they're the two flavors you want at that time in that sort of weird moment where you realize that you're alone. <laughs> what about <that? laughs> You are, of course, alone. Well, um, that's... I don't mind an apartment building for that reason because there's other alienated, atomized people sort of in the on area. Top of you. So yeah. you're like, fuck, I'm alone. But four meters above me is an 80 year old guy. Right. And then to the left of you is, is another uh, person who's alone, like you are listening to podcasts and masturbating. <laughs> alone like in this weird atomized thing but you never talk and when you open the door in the morning you brush past them you try to pretend to not see them and but oh. you're but but if they weren't there you would have killed yourself by now just for some reason sheer solitude of not yeah. knowing there's anyone like i live in a property i uh, say a uh, property it's like just a suburban house out there there's in a new lot farm. of out there on my farm <laughs> new farm and uh and on the um, property the range yeah out on the range there you know you can shoot a couple of head of head of cattle and have yourself a meal by the end of the day and uh you know there's a lot of space here you know yeah i feel true truly alone mm. and i do not say that lightly yeah yeah you can feel because yeah you don't have the like there's no one four meters above you right or four meters to the side of you. Not not in reality. Yeah. They're like a hundred meters <laughs> away. But in my imagination, there's people walking through the house and so on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I used to live in a house, like I, I remember I was in a house alone for a bit and um, I used to imagine intruders all the time. Like I yeah, thought there was someone on saying. the roof. That's what at, I'm at saying. times. Yeah. That's like a guy on the roof. But that was just, uh, yeah, I was like, is that, uh, yeah, I used to be paranoid that someone was walking through 
The house. Yeah. Because the houses creak and all that shit. You know, it's funny we touch on something like this is so relatable, right? Like the trauma of, of being alone in the world. Yeah. You know, in, in, in this culture. And it's funny to me getting to 40 is something I realized recently. I'm not 40, but, you know, getting to that, I can see middle age coming now. And one of the things I find interesting is how I realize now because of all the people I know and so on who are having kids and getting married and getting to that age that we are all suffering, right? And everybody has this trauma. Everyone I know, and we live privileged lives. We're in Australia, in the Western world, we're middle class and so on. Everyone suffered immensely. No one's escaped. Everyone I know either has deep-seated psychological childhood trauma or just betrayals, deceits, rejections, broken hearts. You can't not have that, right? Huh? Garden variety trauma. Garden variety trauma. A few betrayals. A few betrayals, rejections, broken hearts, (laughs) deceit, and, and, and definitely childhood trauma and so on. And you can't, you can't get to 40 and not have that, right? We're all the walking wounded. You'd, you'd have to be Buddha. And even Buddha had a wife that was looking for him. Yeah, she she was pissed off that he f- was fucking... He fucked off around. to meditate under a tree. You reckon when he came back, she was happy? No, he. she would have fucking thrown all his shit in the pool. Yeah, she would have thrown all his shit in the pool. So... he. he- I don't care if you're in line, fucking pack your shit and get the, hit the bricks. Yeah, yeah, good luck with Nirvana, but get the fuck out of here, cunt. You're out of here. Hit the bricks, pal. <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, everybody, you have, to, you have to have suffered deep trauma and be suffering psychological issues that you're overcoming by the time you get to 40. And that's what life becomes, overcoming this. And that's why I find it hard to take anyone middle-aged and older seriously. I feel like when you get elderly, it's different because you sort of come come to peace with death and mm. you sort of just come to peace with the lot time you've got left. But any, any middle-aged is just putting on a smiling face to hide from the fact that you're trying to overcome immense psychological issues. Like the other day, you know, a waiter came up to me who's 50. And I just can't take it seriously because all I see is this man who's suffered immensely. He comes over and goes, hey, uh, you know, the, the, the burger's great today. We've got a special burger. It's a brochet, a brioche bun. And it's uh, the pickles we do in, in-house and it's incredible. It's amazing. But he's trying to smile, you know. It's amazing, this burger. Like, he goes up. It's amazing, this burger. It's incredible. You've really got to. And I'm like, he has cried and masturbated at the same time at some point to have gotten to 50. So it's this weird thing where he's putting forth a um, kind of almost clinically non-traumatized, like bubbly effervescent. We have to. Like the specials is here. Yeah. We have to, right. To function. But all I'm saying is if he's 50, he's cried and masturbated at the same time. He's, he's thought about driving his car off a cliff at least once he's, He's fantasized about murdering an ex-lover. He's um, he's he's watched people get buried. You know, he's lived. And I just yeah, think it's funny happened. that people pretend like that shit is, hasn't happened. Well, what happened? Yeah, because what happens is like if sometimes when you get the guys like, yeah, we've got these like little, little sliders and they're little wagyu little sliders and uh, they're going to be very good. And do you want sparkling? You you go, you you think like they have never had anything go wrong with it because they right. just seem so professional or something that right. they, yeah, it's like you forget that they like might have diarrhea or something. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. forget that, that, that they've had diarrhea. Uh, you the know, whole point of like good hospitality is to make you forget that anyone in hospitality has been traumatized. Or forget that anyone in hospitality's had diarrhea. Yeah. Well, same thing. Same thing. But yeah. yeah, when you're a kid, there's crying, there's masturbating, 
they're worlds apart. You cry and you masturbate, but as you get older, they get closer and closer together until you can't do one without the other. So there's a sort of mathematical vanishing point where they get asymptotically close. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to use technical language, it just means that you suffer, <laughs> you suffer and pain and pleasure become indistinguishable. Right. And that's so why people you hire have a woman to kick you in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> like you hire a prostitute to talk to you and so on. <laughs> yeah. That's an air tasker service you can get, but I, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh weird it, times. It, yeah. I find like that's, that happens with the palate too, doesn't it? The palate wants pleasure and pain at the same time. Yeah, you end up eating rotten cheese. Everything out of France is just rotten shit that they fucking, when they lived in a castle and they were getting sieged by the English army, they fucking ate frogs and they left wine go bad. So it had bubbles and then they fucking left cheese to rot with mold and now they sell it at an inflated price. Yeah, yeah. When I make mistakes, I'm punished and mocked and scorned. Exactly. They're celebrated and they sell them at premium prices. Yeah. And that's, you know? that's part of it. It's a pleasure and pain thing. It's like, oh, I could have a delicious, delicious piece of cheese. Oh no, I'm middle-aged. Can you make it rotten? And I want to eat it yeah. and go, yuck, yum, yuck, yum. Oh, kick me in the balls, oh. prostitute. That, that's exactly the culinary experience of being kicked in the balls. By a prostitute. Wow. Yeah. Oh, sex it's- worker. Excuse me. Not allowed to say prostitute anymore. Like that's going right. to help. That what there's a right. Have you heard this? You can't say prostitute now. You say sex worker. I didn't know. I didn't know. You know what? Sometimes you don't know. Like, is it midget or little person? I well, it's little person, I think. But I, you can that one. <laughs> oh, that one. You're like, yeah. one, <laughs> you really picked up on me there. That one, I pretend not to know. Prostitute and sex worker or the midget? Midget. Midget. Little person. Because that way you can say midget and go, what? Did someone? Anyway, so what did you do last night? I uh, I just got like a, a sack of shit from the store. <laughs> a sack like, of you know, shit? Like I, like I just went and got a sack of like junk food, like from a Hessian sack full of garbage. From a from like a Seven Eleven type, not even an IGA, just like a Seven Eleven. So the selection is just only garbage. It's worse when it's a Seven Eleven, isn't it? It's the worst. Even like an independent twenty four seven place is better because they might have some like Arabic Turkish delight or something like some independent yeah, yeah. junk food. Because for some reason, when I go into the independent IGA amongst like some of the bourgeois boutique. Food, they have that yeah. aisle that's like like uh, expensive pasta and shit, and right. pasta sauces and weird like really expensive muesli and shit. If I go through yeah. that and then go straight to the bag of shit aisle, which is just like the chemical aisle where it's just like Cadbury's and fucking, you know, like the junk food aisle, I don't feel as bad. But if I go to Seven Eleven, it's all lit up. The guy standing behind a bulletproof glass thing in case someone tries to kill him, and yeah, and or hold him up for cigarettes, and then you go in and there's only shit food and those sandwiches that last for fucking forever, twenty, 20 years, and you buy that. Just <laughs> you're still buying the same Cabrick dairy milk, but it tastes a little bit more like cancer. Yeah, it's it, the the Pringles are even worse different Pringles to the ones you'd get at IGA. Like they're worse quality. They're more, yeah. they're like fake Pringles or something. It's like in that, in that documentary about the world's best sushi chef called I dream, I dream of zero or whatever it's called. Anyway, yeah. it's, but you know, the guy who won a Michelin star for sushi and he's so particular. And he says that the cleaner the restaurant is the food tastes better when it's clean and like presented well. It's the same like, like that, but the opposite. In 7-Eleven, the food tastes worse because it's presented badly by uh, disenfranchised um, 
ethnic man who's been attacked multiple times by a local meth head for cigarettes. And he's constantly in the middle of a phone conversation that you think he's talking to. Yeah. And it's always, like, he's never happy. It's not like a no. fun, like, yeah, let's go to the amusement park. It's like, where no. the money you told me, you told me you fuck, fuck you. It's always a business deal that's gone awry, but mm. you think he's talking to you. It's like, I told you 50 bucks. And you're like, really? I thought it was five bucks for the yeah. curly whirly. <laughs> the curly whirly. thought it was five bucks for the curly whirly. You put that into your <laughs> Hessian sack of bullshit. You got a Hessian sack of bullshit. Have you ever looked on the back of Pringles? Have you ever oh. actually, I'm obsessed with looking at ingredients. Yeah. It's have you one ever of looked? the few hobbies that I have as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's always like X54 N7. The number of ingredients for just a chip is mm. crazy. It's like E264785, yeah. coloring A, the little A and shit. Coloring yeah, little, little, little it's A. It's like algebra. You know, like algebra, how it's got like, it's like, mm. it's like algebraic organic chemistry or something on the back. Why do they need so many chemicals? Well, I don't know. Because like if you're cooking like just old school, like an Italian or something, like you're just going <laughs> to... Imagine Jamie Oliver cooking with chemical, like the chemical. All right, we've got here, we've got ourselves, we've got to make ourselves some, you know, potato chips, old school style. We're going to get yeah. some some of these potatoes. We're going to sprinkle on a bit of E26. A lot of you may not know about E26. It's something that slipped through the uh, in the uh, food standards body of the European Union. I got a bit of it. It actually don't take too much because it makes your insides rot. Sprinkle a bit of that. <coughs> Sprinkle a bit of E26 on there. Bit of color A to make the potato look creamier. <laughs> color small A chemical. Sprinkle a bit of that on. It's a color small A. It'll be a small A after the color and it just makes it tasty and it's cheap and it's legal still all the Make ingredients i'm dinner. using today are stale and have been sprinkled with <coughs> preservative 202 to make them last longer yeah want to last as long as possible don't eat this immediately you can leave it sit for use, a while don't use preservative 201 don't use preservative 203 202. Use 202. Got all the, like he's got all the preservatives. There's 202 of them. And you've got to pick the right one for the taste. Yeah. Profile. He's yeah. He's like 202 tastes best. Yeah. It lasts longest. You can put a bit this of meal will last forever. You can meal prep for the whole year. You can just you can make this meal, meal and put it in the pantry. It'll still be sitting there in two years time. You can then if it's, it's hard enough, you could throw it at someone and kill them if you want. And... <laughs> That's funny. Cause I think like with, I think with like chefs and stuff now, they're all just, it's all just so like the other way. It's all like, the, you know, Rick Stein or something will go down and like talk to the scallop merchant. Like, yes. These scallops. So you go in with your hands and get them and then you make them all nice. And this tomato is from Sarah. Well, she they, they, they like to have a brush with the working class in the taste of the meal, you know? Yeah. Oh, you, you go get the scallops yourself, don't you? You're a hardworking man who lives down near the docks. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, you probably work with your hands and you probably actually do real work and don't get paid properly because they dissolved your union. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. The seafarers union got dissolved because of Thatcher. <laughs> yeah, they like to add a bit of that into the flavour too. Anyway, good chatting. Yeah. Hand over the bag of scallops now, you bastard. Yeah, but... um, <laughs> Hand over the scallops now, you bastard. Just like you handed over your land to my ancestors, you working class scum. <laughs> this this degustation is completely paddock to plate. You know, yeah. that's the... Because you got Pringles on one end in the paddock to plate. Yeah, you got a chicken that has been... Ha Jamie Oliver has gone and actually had a meal with and talked to and... <laughs> The chicken, you know, like going, hey, chicken, how? Are, what's your name, Derek? Or, yeah, yeah. Like out of this whole experience with the chicken where it's, you know, spent days with the chicken and then the chicken is killed and immediately rushed in an ambulance to the, ch to the kitchen so it can be cooked as fresh as possible. Then the opposite of that you have is 
all right, this chicken is lived in a cage in a sewer for most yeah. of its life. We've killed it and it's been slowly shipped across the country to me here, frozen. It's unfrozen. I'm going to grind up some antibiotics and sprinkle it in there with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He uses his own medicine cabinet of yeah. antibiotics. Like, this one needs a bit more antibiotics. So I've just used some because I had a cold the other day and I'll sprinkle that on the chicken, make it nice and tasty and healthy. Yeah, healthy <laughs> chicken. We got the antibiotics, and I might put a bit of growth hormone in there. Oh, you know the chicken is dead. Yeah, it's not going to keep growing, but well, I don't yeah. mind a bit of growth hormone with my chicken. And color little I a, see. color little a. Don't get the capital <laughs> a when you're doing the artificial coloring. This muppet the other day told me he bought a biodynamic chicken, which cost about thirty dollars, and chicken goes to university, but it's a, it's absolute rip off. This chicken's two dollars. It's sick. The chicken goes to university, you think? The, I think the biodynamic. Because what is it? It goes caged, which is at the bottom. Right. And then free range. What's be, There's and, nothing below caged, is there? You can't really do anything worse. <laughs> Unless the caged chickens can see the, the free range chickens. So they have to watch, you know, because no one likes to see their friends succeed. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's, I think that's you, the ultimate torture. Is, well, it, like is prisoners... it that the cage chickens actually are, are, are filled with regret and bitterness? Yeah, it's like putting prisoners in like a Westfield and just watching people shop like at a Supre and stuff. It's going to hurt them more to see the free range humans. Right. I see what you mean. <clears throat> like better to be away. Yeah, that's right. Cause so cage is the bottom and then below that's cage looking at free range. Then there's free range and then there's like crazy shit where it's like organic, I think is the next. Yeah. There's ones called pastured where they never go inside mm. and they live where they get like, I worked it out. I got this, this pastured chicken eggs and every hen gets about 20 square meters each, which is more than what I get. Like, I don't get yeah, 20 that's... square meters. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, have they seen the property market at the moment? Like, people's apartments are getting so small. Yeah, 20 square meters is a lot, man. Well, that's when the chicken's doing better than the human. Like, It's the also enough space for a above. chicken to start questioning itself. Yeah. It's going to start feeling alienated and kind of wonder, you know, like what it's all about. And you don't want that in your fucking, you don't want an existential crisis in your eggs. You don't want to taste no. that. No. You don't want to taste yeah. a, a chicken that's fucking red marks. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to, uh, to yeah, eat a, a chicken that, that has read uh, Kierkegaard's Fear and Trembling. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit that, that likes to peruse continental philosophy in its spare time yeah you don't want that you don't want to taste it <laughs>